minutes ago. I don't fucking get it. Where is Pok Demo? Demo? Come. We, we are live. Okay, okay, lover boy. Really, I started and it's it's showing we are coming live. <clears throat> yes, and we are. So hello, hello to everybody. Hello, Katsuni. How are we are live already, are we? So yeah, let's just uh, give it a few minutes, maybe, and just <clears throat> come in time. Otherwise, we just discuss ourselves. Yeah, we can make talk a ourselves. small preview about the exactly about the match that is awaiting us. And oh my god, I really can't wait for this match, Katsuni. <laughs> Who's gonna co cast with you? It's gonna Mem be you, you, Membrillo, and Nilford are ready. No, on. no, Nili is working today, so <laughs> it's gonna be only not. the tag team. Oh. You're here, okay. Yes. He's not. Oh. He got fired from the job, man. <laughs> he got fired. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't quit. Okay. <laughs> GG. Or he quit, so it's fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, guys, uh, Andrew's not here, so let's let's just go ahead with it. So, hello, everyone, guys. Welcome to the stream. And in just like a few minutes, just in about 20 minutes, we will be live streaming for you guys. One of the most anticipated matches in the world is coming. That's going to be Tyrant Legends against Nadia's Boys. That's going to be streamed by Katsuni, as you just heard, by Membrido and by Nilpferd, one of our star co-casters who was, luckily enough, has been able to join us and uh, it's going to even add some more to this game. But anyway, we have a very special... Luck, Mr. Nelson. That's nothing, skill, I didn't man. say luck. It's I didn't skill, say luck. I mean, oh, yeah, 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 skill. He's skill, super yes. strong. Nearly is just skillful, man. Yeah. Anyway, uh, guys, with us, we have a very special guest for you guys. It's Condom from Australia. He's a very, very long-term, loyal community member. He has been around for many, many, many years. And, um, well, he pretty much has witnessed all of the big happenings surrounding this game. Condom, uh, for how long have you actually been around? I only see you around the... Can I add around the just, something, and just he... a little bit something? Yeah, yeah I've, please I've do, grown please up with this game, so I've been playing since 2000. Uh, okay. Yeah, do go ahead, Katsuni. No, no, I, I, I was about to say you actually say not uh, Australian condom, but killer condom. You know, because you, those words might get wrong. Yeah, right, well, <laughs> yeah, I'm talking <laughs> about the user con, just just to make it clear. Okay. Anyway, okay. condom. <laughs> uh, we, our match is coming up in just about twenty minutes, as we told before. We were hoping to have Andrew with us here, but apparently he uh, wasn't able to join us. So I'll just go with you. Uh, yeah, sure. Please, first of all, we do know you're kind of a pro tyrant kind of guy, right? So you are a tyrant fan, so to speak. Uh, anyway, the Nadia's boys team is pretty much the only undefeated team so far. They haven't lost a single match so far uh, if i'm not mistaken they did lose a deathmatch match but they ended up winning the series with a 2-1 uh how high do you rate their chances to actually get a good result in here and by a uh, real good result i actually mean a win <laughs> or uh, a 4-3 win yeah i don't expect them to win any games they could pull a deathmatch game i'm not too sure i'm not too familiar with their deathmatch players but they won't win any random map games sure you think they will will not win a single game, even if though they haven't lost any random map match so far? They haven't played a great team yet. They haven't played anything like Tyrant so far. Well, um, the best that's... player, the, the the best players right now are probably Zuppi and maybe Mentalist, and neither of them are even on the level of K Cab, who's probably Tyrant's worst player right now. Yeah, anyway, I was uh, also, that's the other thing I actually wanted to ask you. Who do you think is going to be their f best four initial players? I mean, we, most of people maybe would have uh, said Wonder, Loiza, and Zupi, and uh, we could maybe discuss who the fourth one would be. For you, in your uh, opinion, who are the best, the best four initial team? Yeah, definitely those three, Zupi, Wonder, and Loiza. Uh, but Mentalist, I think, right now. We've also seen him playing recently, how, how much he's stepped it up. Um, he beat Mr. Yo 2-0 two, two today. So, yeah, he's yeah. definitely um, stepped it up lately. Okay, so good well, news. Yeah. Andrew has just joined us. And uh, Andrew, Finally. can you hear us? Are you here? No, okay, he disconnected again. I guess he's going to come back anytime right soon again. He's going to come back anytime <laughs> soon. Anyway, I don't know if this is uh, the, a good time for uh, Manalis. I'm not really sure if he's actually going to come. Uh, oh, so he won't be playing these games? I'm not sure. I'm just uh, suggesting because of the time. Because I do know uh, he does have a very complicated... Uh, I don't know time zone, I'm going to call it a like, complicated time zone. So I'm not sure if he's going to make it. But I do think he would be the fourth best player 
on the uh, Nighty Boys. Definitely. Hey guys. I, I think he's a, probably the second best player now. Okay, Andrew has just joined us. Thank you, Andrew, for coming. And uh, yeah, Andrew was supposed to be our second guest here on this. Uh, yeah, I'm kind really of sorry. For some reason, I've been screwed up with the GMT, and I thought that 13:30 was uh, 9:30 my time, and it's actually 8:30. So that's it's that's okay. Why I'm You've, made sorry, it. You've, made it. You've made it. You've made it. So anyway, same mistake twice. <laughs> no, the last time I just slept slept in, man. But uh, I know I knew you wouldn't be late since you know you're such a big tyrant fan and all. You can't miss today. Yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna miss this. No way. <laughs> anyway, guys, it's starting good. Starting good. Anyway, uh, Andrew, please let us know uh, what you think about this. We were talking obviously about the match that is coming: Tyrant Legends versus Nadia's Boys. And Condom has a, a very radical opinion. Uh, in if I may say so, he said Nadia's boys are not going to win a single game on this match. They might probably win the death match game, but they have no chance in random map games. What do you have to say about that? Oh, I, I disagree, man. I really think, like, I mean, look, I'm not a big Nadia's boys, like, supporter or anything, but, like, I really think, like, given, you know, the time they've put in, like, the improvement of Mentalist, uh, I really think, like, they could win two or three games and, like, I mean, if you can win three games, you can win four. Like, I'm not saying it's going to happen. Like, I definitely think Legends has the upper hand. But, uh, you know, these guys are really good, and they know the maps inside and out. And I think the second map, or the third map today, is Bedouins. And that's, like, one of their big home maps. So I definitely think, like, Nadia's boys can take a couple games here. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be like it's gonna be close, in my opinion. Yeah, we actually saw Zupi picking the whole mech versus Viper yesterday, right? And uh, if I'm not mistaken, he even won that game, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. Yeah, yeah, he, he beat Viper and Dog on it. He beat Dog in the last Polaris challenge on it. But uh, just as a team, from what I've seen, like they're really good on that map. So I would look out for that match especially. Yeah, but Condom, you uh, stick with it. Yeah, you say it's going to be a four, a blatant four or a four zero for Tyrants. Uh, even though yep. we do know uh, Nadia's boys are pretty much the the team that has done the heaviest practicing for this tournament, right? Yeah, they play all day, but so does Tyrant. So they're just well, you know good what? players, individual players. I think that maybe like I mean I'm also figuring in that maybe Tyron isn't at their top level yet. I I don't think Cab is a top level player. I think Doubt is probably not like maybe a step or two below his top form, and you know it's probably the same for Jordan. So like taking the, those factors into account too, you know that's another reason I think Nadia's boys could really take a couple games here. Uh, if you know obviously if Tyron's in their top top shape. Uh, there's not many teams who are going to, you know, even take a single game off them. So this could be like, you know, a, a, a several factors coming together for Nadia's boys to give them a chance today. Uh, so your prediction... I agree with you on some point, but I, I feel like even Tyrant, at, not at their best, is still better than anybody from Nadia's boys. Yeah, so you stay with your prediction. Like, it's going to, what would you say would be the result, uh, Andrew? What would be something realistic for you, in your opinion? Conjum just uh, said it for zero. 4 to 2. I think 4 2. I, I think uh, Tyrant will take the deathmatch game, which is, that's a big swing game, though. Because, like, if, I mean, Nadia's boys have a chance in deathmatch. They have a couple of good deathmatch players, uh, Colors and Leaf and Rubenstock. So it's not like they're going to have, like, no chance against Viper and Jordan. I think it really depends on the civs in that game because I think Viper and Jordan and Deathmatch, you know, some civs are really, really good. Other ones, maybe not that much experience. So that'll probably be a factor there. And then, you know, I think I think they can win Bedouins and uh, maybe one other map. Maybe the, I don't know. It's tough to say because Tyrant's so strong on Land Nomad. So we'll see. I would say four to two. You still consider them very strong, yeah? If even uh, Land Nomad was actually the only map they have lost in this tournament, they have lost on their very first game against the Czech team. Uh, it was actually the only map they have lost so far on this uh, tournament. So you still yeah, think that's I don't think Envy will be playing. <laughs> Okay, so you think that's not something, uh, another map where uh, Nadia's boys could eventually explore uh, some weaknesses in there? Yeah, I think they, uh, I mean, they have a chance the on all maps. Stuff. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, I, it's a chance, but only if Tyrant gets a bad start. Like if someone has, um, if they miss a starting spot or something. But they should get a re anyway, so it's unlikely. Okay, well, uh, still, it's. Uh, Nadis boys are pretty much kind of a surprise team, right? I mean, they have. I at least wouldn't have expected them 
by nothing to be at this point without a, a single loss in the whole tournament. And uh, I've got to ask you, Andrew, the same thing I just asked it kind of. Uh, who would you consider would be the four, the four best players uh, for Nadia's team? I mean, we know for Tyrants, there's not much of a choice. They have pretty much only four active players. Uh, but about the Nadia's teams, who would you uh, say are the best four? Uh, you know, obviously Pike is their best with uh, Nadia second. No, I mean, it's uh, it's Voyager, <laughs> Zappi, uh, Wonder, and uh, Mentalist. I think that's the clear best four. Uh, Spaden and Pike are probably like, you know, right there for that fifth spot, maybe equal depending on the map. But uh, I think those four have like separated themselves from the rest and they're all, you know, 2K1, 2K2 team game players who can, you know, compete with anyone. Uh, in your, your opinion, where exactly lies the big, biggest strength on this uh, Tyrant Legends team, in your guys' opinions? I mean, they do have a lot of experience. That's maybe the biggest difference between these two teams, right? Uh, the Nadia's boys team is a very new team, so to speak. They have trained a lot, that's for sure. Uh, but they're kind of new. They have no tournament experience playing together. Uh, where do you think lies the biggest strength in this Tyrant team? Yeah, I mean, experience is their biggest strength. They've been playing together for how many years now? Three, four years? And Kate have not doubt have been playing together for even longer. So, yeah, that's the main experience. They've just got the big game experience. Yeah, well, what do you think, Demo? Hey, is it all all up to the experience? I mean, yeah, that's a big factor. I think the biggest thing that like makes them so hard to beat is they have the two best players in the world by far. Like Jordan and Viper are way better than everyone else, in my opinion. I, I don't even think Ryut's on their level. And uh, when you have you know the two best players in the world, it it gives you a lot of margin for error, you know? Like, doubt can die, but, you know, if Jordan's boomed, it doesn't matter, he'll kill two people by himself, you know what I mean? Like, it, it just covers up a lot of mistakes or other weaknesses, and then, I mean, you factor in the fact that doubt finished, what, third in COT, he's arguably the third or fourth best player in the world, so, I mean, it speaks for itself, the, the individual talent, probably their biggest strength, and then, obviously, they're all great team game players, too, so it's hard to find a weakness, really. Um, what do you guys think should be like, should be the kind of strategy uh, by by the Nadia's boys team if they actually want to get a good result in here? Uh, you just said it pretty much yourself. Um, Jordan, Viper, Dowd, all all of them incredibly strong and skilled players. Um, should they be like trying to explore uh, KCAP's sort of? Um, weakness in the 1v1 in the individual uh, performance? Should be their planner of attack to somehow try and get KCAP? Or you, don't, you don't consider him work. to be the weakest link anyway? I, I don't I don't think he is. I think probably even um, that's probably the weakest link. Even he's in great form. But yeah, they just need to take them by surprise somehow. They need to come up with something new. Pretty tough to do at this stage. I think um, what NC did against the Dreamers the other day Something like that, maybe, but that's going to be pretty tough for them to take them by surprise at all. What, what do you th think, Demo? What should be their plan of attack, so to speak? Um, I mean, I'm sure they have, uh, especially given how much they've played these maps, I'm sure they have ideas on, you know, the optimal strategy for each map. So I'm, I'm sure they'll just go, like, I, I don't think they're a team that's going to feel so overmatched that they have to do, like, you know, some YOLO ridiculous strategy. I, I think they're <laughs> just going to play their style and you know, see how it goes. I mean, that you have to remember this is double elimination, so they might as well just test their strengths and you know their standard play or how you know. Yeah, to see how far best. behind. Or yeah, yeah, not why, there. yeah. And I mean, that's a good point. Realistically, they're no one really expects them to win anyway. So they're playing with high cost money here. Even if they lose, you know, if they gain experience from it, it's still a positive experience. So just go and play their games, like play to their strengths, and see what happens. Right. Uh, do you feel like it's really important, like, get a good start? It's something I really have seen in uh, big series, in long series on Age of Empires, that if you actually get a good start on the series by winning one map or something, uh, that it could swing the whole thing around. Uh, like, you get a lot of confidence, you know, you're ahead, you know, you have done well. Uh, do you think if uh, Nadia's voice uh, are able to get the first game, we could be here for some big surprise? Uh, it's possible, but again, I think the big game experience for Tyrant it wouldn't affect them too much. First game, uh, whereas for Nadia's boys, I think. They... Yeah, I, uh, yeah. Are you, oh, sorry, go ahead, man. No, no, I'm finished. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I think momentum is a big thing. I mean, like just to use an example, I remember uh, yesterday uh, POJ played versus SY and I, I came on. They were already down like 2-0 and it was time for deathmatch, which I guess we were expected to win because SY doesn't really have deathmatch players. So we won that and then all of a sudden it was 2-1 to one, and then POJ took the fourth map and it seemed like it was just a big momentum shifter. Uh, I mean... To go against that, though, if you saw the KGB versus Psy B games, or SYB games, oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. it was like 3-0 K KGB, and then SYB just like took the next three maps relatively easily. So I guess it depends on the mindset of each team, like, you know, how much they, how emotionally uh, impacted they get by losses or wins and stuff. But, uh, I mean, especially against a team like Tyrant Legends, you probably want to, like, have a good feeling after the first game or two, at least, like, you know... Even if you don't win it, at least have a chance to win it. Don't just get run off the map in 30 minutes and then just be like, oh, geez, we're just overmatched here. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, who do you guys consider to be like the leader of the Netty's Boys team? We do know KCAP is pretty much the trainer and the big mind, uh, the big mastermind behind the Tyrant Legends team. Uh, who would you expect to take that role on the Netty's Boys team? Is it Wonder? Is it the Soupy? Who would it be? Yeah, I've always considered it to be Wonder, but uh, I don't know. I don't really watch too many of their games. Zuppi is probably the best player, but I consider Wonder to be. The yeah, it seems like it's Wonder to me. Uh, I mean, just from like watching a lot of their games, spectating, and I mean, watching a bit of like Pike stream and hearing how they talk with each other, it seems like Wonder. Uh, I don't know if it's just his familiarity with the maps, if he's studied them the most, or if he's just like you know their de facto strategy guy, because. I mean, he's not their most talented player, but uh, they do seem to kind of defer to him in terms of decision making and strategies and whatnot. So that's yeah. who I'd go with as he well. Does, he does seem like a very intelligent player from when he's done casting and things. Sounds like he definitely knows what's happening. Yeah, I'd yeah say I he's agree with you. I agree with you. He, we have heard many interesting things from him when when he's co-casting. Okay, guys, we don't have many minutes to go, but I still want to uh, cover two more topics really fast. Uh, other big matches happening on the War is Coming this week. Uh, we have ahead of us Warlords versus the Dreamers team. Uh, a match I'm also personally really looking for. It's going to be somehow the rematch uh, from Brazil A versus Argentina on the Nations Cup. Um, how you guys think that's going to go like? Uh, we do know uh, Argentinians, unfortunately, are going to be without Nikov. Um, I think oh, really? one is going to make it, but Nikov is not going to be able to make it. Uh, he's uh, on holidays or something. Uh, how do you guys think? What do you guys think about the, that match? How is it going to go? Uh, I was thinking that it would be very close. It'll be four, like 4-3 four, to either team, it could be. But if Nikov's not playing, then that um mention things. Although I suppose they have uh, some good backups there as well. But yeah, I'd say probably Tyrant 4-3 for that one. What would you so say, It's going to be very Andrew? close regardless. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of ruined for me when I found out Nikov wasn't going to play. Like, not to be a downer or anything, but he's clearly their best player. And I think with Nikov, they really could have, if not beaten Warlords outright, at least given them like a really good series, like just like you said, like in the Nations Cup. Uh, I, without Nikov, I don't really see it being that close. Maybe maybe 4-2, something like that. You think Nikov will make that much of a difference? Because we do know uh, he's their strongest one versus one player, that's for sure. That's no, There's no doubt about that. Um, uh, yeah, but I think he's the strongest game? team player as well. You think so? Okay. Well, that was obviously a well, big it seems blow like, for yeah, him. And, he and Juan. Yeah, it's also like a mental thing too. Like, I mean, I think all the R guys, like, they all think of Nikov as their best player. And, like, just think about that going into a game against a team at least as, you know, skilled as you, probably, you know, even more so individually. And then you got to go in without your best player. Like, that's just like a big mental handicap. And I'm, I, I just feel like that's going to adversely affect them tremendously. So I, I don't really see them beating Warlords without him. The good news is, uh, they'll, both teams will probably end up in the round robin. So. We'll probably see a rematch at some point. Yeah, well, I we also expect it to be close games, regardless. Yeah, they'll have a chance. I mean, they'll have a chance. They got four really good players anyway. I mean, with Patton, FedEx, Juan, and Gary. So it's not like they're going to be like easy games. I just don't know if they can win. You know, three or four. But their backup players will be first team players in just about any other team. They're still in decent shape. Yeah. Um. We. I know Andrew, for example, felt some kind of a sour mouth taste when the, when the, on the Nations Cup, because there was a win, uh, 
the Argentinians beat Brazil A on the runs before and then they ended up losing against the Brazil A team on the semi-finals, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, some people kind of thought there was an unfair placement that Brazil actually ended up second and uh, Argentinians uh, ended up third and not the other way around. Uh, you guys think this will be kind some kind of a, there will be some kind of a revenge feeling from the Argentinian guys that they will make them really go into this and want to win this for sure? Because I mean, considering it's a double elimination bracket, they still will have a chance even if they lose. And you guys are considering both of the uh, both are considering they are a little bit um, on a bad spot here since they do not have the cup. But do you think that kind of will uh, to revenge the Nations Cup score will maybe play a role somehow? Uh, I don't think it will, but yeah, I don't think it will affect their mentality too much. Not at all. I know there was like a little bad blood. Like I talked to Nikov kind of regularly, um, and he he kind of expressed to me like distaste with how Brazil A, like especially Stark and Fire, had acted in the nations. I mean, uh, in the Nations Cup with the trash talk and whatnot. So I don't think he particularly likes. I mean, I'm not going to speak for him, but you know what I mean. Like I feel like there is a little bit of bad blood. And uh, I'm sure deep down they want to get that revenge. I, I do think that, uh, you know, like a sense of realism is probably setting in now that without Nikov, they're not going to get that revenge just yet. But, uh, I mean, looking ahead, I'm sure they'll be they'll be kind of thirsty for, the, uh, for that revenge. Yeah. Okay, so something I'm very curious to know. Yeah, we do know uh, Argentina's... Uh... I, want, I don't want to say abuse, but it did use a lot of a sling strategy on the Nations Cup. Uh, back then it was nerfed or banned or whatever. Uh, do you think we're going to see that in this tournament from the Argentines? Are going to see more sling? Or do you think because of the war is coming mode, which somehow weakens the sling on Feudal Age? And even more in Castle Age, to be honest. Uh, do you think it's a, it's a strategy we will maybe going to see on this matchup? Yeah, I think they'll continue this thing. It's a, it has been nerfed a little bit, but still not a, it hasn't ruined the strategy. Like it's still a very um, viable strategy in pretty much any game, like on any map. So yeah, I think they'll continue to sling, but they they don't need to as well. They can pull off anything. But talented players. Yeah, I was just gonna say I don't think they need to. Like I don't know exactly what their plan is, but like in terms of the like they are, they have four really good players. So I mean, there's not like a situation where you say, oh well, you know. This guy, like this guy's got to wall up and just sling Nikov. You know, it's, it's the only way to, you know, you know, cover up that weakness. So I, I think they could go either way. They're, they're a versatile team. They can play all maps, water, land, and they can play them all at a high level. So it'll be interesting to see what they decide to do going forward. Okay, really looking forward for that match. But that's not it, guys. This week, still another big match also wow. coming up. It's going to be KJB versus L-Clan. Uh, also two very high-rated teams. Uh, L-Clan, many people considering to be maybe the third, uh, the third best. Uh, give me a very fast opinion, guys, because we really need to give back to Katsuni. A fast opinion about that game. What, what is it going to be? KJB versus L-Clan. Score. Yeah, I think KJB is going to get the upset. They'll win 4-3. Um, mainly thanks to Raz's scheduling skills. <laughs> but, yeah, no, I, I think that's a, actually a really underrated team. I think Goku is one of the best um, team team game players, and Hassan's in great form at the moment. Yeah. All right, so I, give me I a number. Will, give me a number. Four three. Four three for KJV. What about you, Entry? Yep. What about you, Entry? Uh, four one L Clan. The only win KJV will get will be deathmatch, and uh, they'll just get wiped off the map in most of the other maps. That's oh my, my god, opinion. very, very radical opinion to your different opinions. I I'm would love to go you, into that. I just that. don't see them as the same level, but we'll see, we'll see. I'm excited for the game, so we'll see. Anyway, yeah, we don't have much time games. left, but uh, I have here Tef with me, and me uh, and Tef would like to give a prediction, a prediction here to this game ourselves, Tef Martin. Let me know, what do you We'd think? What's going to be the end score? Hello, everybody. Hi, Tef. So on, what Nelson, is... Give me your opinion, Nelson. I'm, score. I'm hoping, I'm hoping for the 4-3 for Tyrants. I want to see Nadia Voice getting an awesome result here. I don't think they're going to win, but I'm hoping to see an awesome close result. What about That's you? quite a bold prediction, 4-3. I've said all along, <laughs> I think, 4-2 to Legends, but all six games will be tight. I agree with Andrew. I think Nadia's boys will give Legends a bit of a shock on Bedouins. And maybe even Atacama could be a possibility for them if they take 
I think they lose the first, win the second. Death match is 50 50. If they win the death match, they're 2 1 in front. And I think then you go to our continental, 2 all, Atacama. They might, they might scrape that win. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really hoping for an expected result. I'm so hoping for an unexpected result here. Uh, there would I hope be... it's as close as you guys think. <laughs> I think it will be close. And I think Nadia's boys are playing Legends at the right time. I don't, I don't think, other than maybe Viper, I don't think Legends are at the top of their game yet. I think now is the time to play them. I wouldn't want to play them if they got to the grand final because then you can see the best of them all. It's my opinion. Yeah, that's a very valid point. Andrew mentioned that before as well. They might play a role because uh, Tyrants have... I, do you know what I hope? I hope Nadia's boys don't try and sit back and try and out-macro the Tyrant players because they're going to lose. They, they, that would be my prediction. If, if Nadia's boys think they can just sit and try and boom and be strong late game, I don't think that's their best chance of winning. I think their best chance is to strike fast, hit hard, don't do anything stupid, just go for really fast, in effect, almost like 4v4 flushes, because I don't think all the tyrants up to the speed of a fast 1v1 game, other than Viper at the moment. I agree. That's the way that you have to be tyrant. You have to be a not just sit back and hope to outplay them. Well, maybe as Andrew just mentioned before, uh, since they do know this match is not going to be it, uh, even if they lose, they still have the loser's brackets to go inside the round robin. Uh, maybe that's really what they're going to do. They're just going to play their normal game, just do what they have been doing for the past six months on Vubli, and just bring their A game, nothing fancy, just play the way they always play, and see how they fare against Tyrants. Uh, are they still very much behind? Are they maybe a little bit closer than they thought? And maybe considering how they do on this game, they will decide how they will face the other matches, probably. Anyway, guys, I thank you so much for having for being here with me. I hope we can repeat this uh, for some other great matches. And uh, I will give back to Katsuni. Thank you so much, Katsuni, for... No, uh, not, not all the players are here, so you guys can, can you talk a nice. bit more. You guys can, can talk a bit more, really. Oh, we're still waiting for players, are we? For doubt, because as you can see in the room, they are making bets. Viper said, okay, I'm taking bets now. 5-1, <laughs> uh, for, for, for doubt if he will show up in time or not. So, <laughs> so you can <laughs> guys talk a doubt bit is more. Doubt always late. <laughs> no problem. always late. <laughs> yeah, I reckon he has, he has trouble getting that huge bulk of a body of his out of bed, I think. <laughs> yeah. I reckon maybe a little bit of a Hassan syndrome, maybe, away. here. <laughs> Go ahead, Condom, sorry. Oh, sorry, maybe uh, Nadia's boys will get lucky, and Envy will play a few games. Oh, is he around? Is he actually around, Envy, to step oh. in? In case he's asked to? I'm not to? sure, I'm not even on Well, maybe he did play... He, was. he did play the uh, Land Nomad game, as I mentioned before. Yeah, the, uh, the only game they lost. <laughs> Yeah, well, doesn't speak too much for him. Uh, who knows? Who knows? I mean, he did uh, write the uh, Land Nomad um, guide, if I quite remember. And I've read it loads of times. I actually learned a lot from it. So I think he's a good LN player. I think it doesn't, doesn't uh, say at all that they actually lost that game. Or yeah. maybe, or maybe yeah. Doubt, yeah. doubt got game, so emotional, you know? You think he's afraid, Katsuni? You think he got cold feet no, of the no, Nadi's no, voice maybe, team? Maybe he got emotional because uh, Memp was planning something, he's planning something and he's waiting some reply from, from Doubt. He got one reply from one other huge legend uh, who will be involved in one thing that will happen, hopefully, and we are waiting for Doubt's reply. A lot of mystery here, a lot of mystery. No, I have no, no idea what you're talking Memp, about. You can go, Memp. No, well, uh, trying to plan a uh, best of don't know the games, probably 11 uh, between Chris and Doubt. Well, I'd love to say for, that. For oh me, God, it, 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 some big for me yeah. they, they are the legends of AOC in the times that uh, probably I enjoy a lot with AOC because you know that uh, we are enjoying a lot now, but you know, when you start a game, it's like a different feeling. And like 10 to 12 years ago, yeah, I was talking with Chris last night. He's uh, he was 14 years old when he was a top, top, top one with 14 years old, and he was in Korea. Yeah, and I I asked him and he confirmed that he will play for sure. So waiting for doubt, and if he accepts, we will do something great with them. 
That's the greatest rivalry in this game, I think. But if Down not, is, is nothing happened. I mean, Chris. we are not forcing with that. I didn't want to say anything here because I want that he feel free to 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 say yes or no. Not don't want to push anyone. But well, it's it's fine. If he's the, if he doesn't accept, it's it's nothing bad, no problem. Because he can maybe be busy or or maybe he do, just don't want. He has the right to to tell yes or no or whatever. But uh, didn't want to to talk about that. Till I get an answer, because if you put some expectative and then you get a no, it can, can be disappointed. But yeah, well, wait, wait to see the, the answer. Maybe you usually say he has the right to remain silent, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's a panda, but well, you know. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> hope he accept. I hope. Anyway, Katsuni and Mem, uh, we heard the opinions of everyone on this channel, but we haven't heard your opinion about the outcome oh, of this I, game. I, please, uh, pass from me. I mean... Okay, but I people, will... People, I will, the, um, I will, I will <laughs> like to see... Let, let me tell the opinion, Katsuni, or people will think that you are... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, my opinion is that I agree with Nelson in one point, in that I would like to see 4-3, but uh, I don't hope that because I think it's not going to happen. With Lucky, with Lucky, in my opinion, they will get two games. But uh, my real impression is that it can be 4-1 or 4-0. But uh, I don't think so. It will go more for that 4-1 for, for the Legends, is my opinion. Okay, 4-1. That's also what the poll uh, dictates. Someone has been yeah. posting a yeah. link for yeah. a straw polling there. And I see the... No, wait, it's even a 4-0. 4-0 is now winning, actually. So do, you know, do you know, Nelson, what I would like to see? I, I was talking with Tav before. Uh, even if it's 4-3, I prefer a 4-0 or 4-1 with games super close, more than one hour games, that 4-3 when, when you have some Titanic or some Sling and finish game in 30 minutes. I really want to see great and close games. Don't, doesn't matter the score. Just yeah, as for sure. That's, as that's what we all hope for, for yeah. sure. But I think uh, it's w with this kind of level involved, these players are all so very, so high rated, so skilled. I don't think we're gonna see lots of Titanics. We maybe see a Titanic in one or two games, <laughs> or surely not on six or seven. So, um, but again, yeah, I totally agree with you. And good news, Andrew and Condom Mentalist is uh, inside the game room. So Mentalist probably uh, gonna be. Really it's probably gonna be the fourth uh, player here. I just see Wonder, I see Liza, I see Zubi, and I see Manalis. So, um, in your opinion, guys, the 90s boys team here has brought their A game. They have all of their best players, in your guys' opinion. Um, let's see, man. I can't, I can't wait to see this game. We're still waiting for yeah. it out, it seems. Just check Nelson below our channel in Team Speak, and you will know exactly the team. Because they are just... A little down. If you yeah, scroll yeah, the anyway, speak. I just checked it on the Volvi yeah. Volvi game room. It's working. They are better. there, and yeah. Anyway, I also see here Nilford. Nilford, you still didn't give us uh, your opinion. You're still here. Yes, I'm still here, obviously. So please um, tell tell I... us your opinion on the results. First of all, I have to say that I'm super hyped about this game. It's the first time that two top tier one teams are meeting each other in this tournament. So. I think we will see most likely the best games concerning skill level we have ever seen. I think long and intense games. But I feel like Tyrant should dominate in the long run. So I think it should be a lot of long games and well fought. But I think it should be 4-0 or 4-1 for Legends. Okay, okay. So 4-1, you, you kind of agree with the poll. Yeah, the poll also calls for a 4-0 or a 4-1, so you kind of stick with them. Well, looks, me and Mem are a little bit alone in here with our hopes of a 4-3. Um, <laughs> I really wouldn't underrate these 90s voice tapes. That's, that's all I'm going to say. I wouldn't underrate them. Uh, they have been playing a lot. They know all the maps by heart. I even remember... Uh, I saw obviously saw a couple of streams with them playing, and I remember one or two two situations even, when after like two seconds, I mean, in this case, it doesn't uh, really play a big role, but after two seconds, they know exactly what map it is and they know exactly what they're gonna do. So they kind of have a standard strategy for each map, uh, which could be a big plus for him, for them, yeah. Maybe the Tyrants have that as well, we do not know, uh, since they do uh, secret uh, training. Nelson. Yeah, uh, you go like for sure. Well, maybe, you might be right, we don't know, we don't know. They train in secret, so we don't know. Maybe. Um, you think with KCAP, they may be going to strat for every map. Maybe, just maybe. <laughs> just maybe. I don't think the M, the A, the Y, the B, or the E fits for that. 
I well, we don't know. We don't know. That's no, the thing. I, I, okay. I'm, okay. Cap, cap okay. strategy. Get the two best players in the world and, uh, you know, make everyone think you're a genius. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean uh, okay. there. Cap is a genius. Okay. Uh, we'll he probably is the, the brain of AOC. He is and everyone, the brain. Do you, yeah, I everyone mean, is do you mentioning... Think that anyone who is the leader of this team would have trouble uh, leading them to the, like winning the last few tournaments though I'm just saying an individual okay. talent alone. I think you would have trouble okay well I mean, I'm just saying like <laughs> you got the three best players in the world uh, how much directing yeah. do they really need you know uh, I agree with you but he's been doing it since I think he's won everything except for one WC WCL like he's won every tournament except for one of them I think so, yeah he's done all right Anyway, anyway, let's see. Are we still waiting for Dal? Looks like we still are waiting for Dal. Uh, I just saw uh, Spaden writing on the chat. He is the mastermind of Nadi's voice. No wonder. Uh, so <laughs> I do wonder why he's not playing. <laughs> How would you guys would uh, rate uh, Spaden's uh, chances of actually getting on the main four team here? Uh, is there a map where you guys consider him to actually be... Um... I need to check. Let me just check the weather charts a minute of all the other countries that are playing apart from Spain. I just want to see if there's any huge electric lightning storms going to knock out any, any of the PCs. No, I'm only joking. I think they're all they're all good, strong players, all of them. But the top four, yeah, I agree earlier. They didn't uh, yeah, some of the top four is pretty yeah, clear. None of their top four really Especially have Especially with mental stepping on any... Now. You know, it's not like any other time. Maybe Loja on water isn't as good as on land, but uh, the other ones are pretty much equal. I think Wonder is more of a water player. Uh, Zuppy, probably more of a land player, but he's just so good it doesn't matter. And uh, Mentalist seems to be really strong on both, so I don't really see I mean, any replacement coming I in. Was, I was talking to Memb and Katsuni for about half hour before the stream, and we were discussing things, and, and I gave my opinion on uh, Nadia's team. I said, I think Loja is the strongest player that you would want to try and go and beat somebody else it's my opinion and my one concern was one that i think can be a, a a danger he can either come up with an absolutely awesome move that nobody would expect and take someone out of the game and that awesome move could just as quickly titanic that would be my worry is if wonder tries to do something really crazy in this game well, let's see if that's gonna happen. Uh, is there a map where you guys think that Mentalist could actually uh, give his place to someone else? Is, is there a map where you guys think that, for example, Pike or Spaden will fare better? No, maybe uh, Nomad. I, I don't think so. Maybe Nomad for Pike. Or, I, don't, I don't really know. Uh, I think Mentalist plays a lot of everything, though, because he plays so much. So... <laughs> I think he'll, he's fine on any I think, map. I think it's Ancient Lake V4, but since they don't play this one at this stage... Yeah. Well, let's see. Uh, anyway, doubt guys, right. yeah, doubt is inside the room. Oh, so no. once again, guys, <laughs> thank you so much for being here with me. I will give back to Katsuni. Katsuni, the Thanks. stream thank is yours. You, thank, thank you so much for allowing me. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here. And uh, I hope to see uh, to make this again, guys. Condom and Andrew. Well, Andrew is gone. Uh, Condom and Andrew. I think. I sure, hope we sure. can do this some other Thanks time. Thanks for again. all the input, guys. Yeah. Hope so too. So good stream, Katsuni. Have fun, Membrilu Katsuni. Newport, your favorite streamers will now take over. Thank you for having me, guys. See you later. <laughs> Anytime. Thanks, everybody.